A single mistake here costs $500,000 per hour. Every year, 14,000 ships trust their fate to a waterway that shouldn't exist. The Panama Canal lifts vessels weighing 70,000 tons into the sky, using a trick that most engineers said was impossible. But here's what nobody's talking about. This 110-year-old system runs on technology from 1914, yet it moves 15% of global trade. Every crossing burns through 200 million liters of fresh water that vanishes forever into the ocean. The math says it should have dried up decades ago. China is watching. They're building their own version. And when it opens, the world's shipping routes will never be the same. The future isn't coming. It's already here. Before the Panama Canal existed, ships faced a nightmare journey. Picture this. A massive container vessel leaving New York bound for San Francisco had two options. Sail 15,000 kilometers around the treacherous Cape Horn at the bottom of South America, battling some of the most violent seas on Earth, or turn back. That voyage took 15 days minimum. 15 days of burning fuel, paying crew, and watching competitors beat you to market. The economic cost was staggering. Ships burned through thousands of tons of fuel. Crews demanded hazard pay for navigating waters that had claimed hundreds of vessels. Insurance premiums skyrocketed. But in 1914, everything changed. Suddenly, that same journey took 10 hours through Panama, 10 hours instead of 15 days. The impact on global trade was instant and irreversible. Here's the thing. The Panama Canal isn't just a ditch cut through Central America. It's one of the most sophisticated hydraulic systems ever conceived. The engineering challenge was absolutely mind-blowing. Think about it. You need to lift ships weighing up to 70,000 tons to the height of a nine-story building, move them across a lake, then lower them back down to sea level, all without using pumps. The solution was the lock system, but calling them locks doesn't do them justice. These are precision engineered chambers that function as water elevators and the scale is just incredible. Let me break down what happens when a ship enters from the Atlantic side. The vessel approaches the Gatun locks, which consist of three separate chambers stacked like stairs. Each chamber is 320 meters long. Now get this, the largest ships that can fit, called Panamax vessels, are 305 meters long. That leaves exactly seven and a half meters of clearance total, front and back combined. We're talking about maneuvering a structure longer than three football fields with less room to spare than a typical parking space. But here's where the engineering gets absolutely wild. The canal operators don't rely on the ship's captain for this precision work. By law, the moment a vessel enters Panama Canal waters, Command is transferred to a canal pilot. These aren't just experienced sailors. They're specialists who have spent years training for this specific waterway. They know every current, every wind pattern, every quirk of the lock system. The ship's captain, who might have decades of experience navigating the world's oceans, has to step aside and watch someone else take the wheel. It's the only place on Earth where this handover is mandatory by law. Here's the thing. These pilots are guiding ships from a bridge that's often 70 meters above the water, trying to thread a needle with a vessel that takes over a kilometer to come to a complete stop. The visibility is limited. The margin for error is non-existent. And they're doing this up to 40 times per day during peak operations. One miscalculation, one moment of lost concentration, and you've got a multi-billion dollar crisis on your hands. The lock system itself is a masterclass in hydraulic engineering. When a ship enters the first chamber at Gatun, massive steel gates close behind it. These gates are over two meters thick and weigh 680 tons each. They're designed to hold back the entire weight of Lake Gatun, which sits 26 meters above sea level. Once sealed, the real magic begins. Valves open at the bottom of the chamber and gravity does all the work. Water from Lake Garten flows through massive culverts built into the lock floor and walls. No pumps, no motors, just gravity and the weight of water. 80 million liters flood into the chamber in just eight minutes. Think about that volume. 
That's enough water to fill 32 Olympic swimming pools in the time it takes you to make breakfast. The ship rises eight meters as the chamber fills to match the level of the next chamber ahead. Once equalized, the forward gates open and the process repeats, three times total. By the time the ship exits the Gatun locks, it has been lifted 26 meters above the Atlantic Ocean and is now floating on Lake Gatun. But wait, how do they keep these massive ships from slamming into the lock walls as water rushes in? This is where another ingenious system comes into play. Locomotives. Not the kind you see on railways, but specialized electric locomotives called mules. Each one weighs 55 tons and can pull loads 50 times their own weight. They run on tracks alongside the lock chambers, connected to the ship by steel cables. As the ship enters each chamber, workers throw lines from shore to the vessel, and these lines are attached to the mules. Four to eight mules, depending on ship size, keep the vessel perfectly centered as water surges around it. The synchronization required is incredible. If one mule pulls too hard or releases too much tension, the ship can drift toward the wall. With less than half a meter of clearance on each side, even a small drift can be catastrophic. Now let's talk about Lake Gatun, because this is where the Panama Canal's genius really becomes clear. When the canal was being planned, engineers faced an impossible problem. The land between the oceans wasn't flat. There was a mountain range in the way. The French had tried to dig a sea-level canal in the 1880s like they did at Suez, but the terrain destroyed them. Landslides, flooding, the jungle fought back with a vengeance. Over 20,000 workers died, mostly from yellow fever and malaria. The project collapsed in 1889, taking the French company's finances with it. When the Americans took over in 1904, they had a radically different idea. Instead of fighting the mountains, they would use them. They would dam the Chagres River, create an artificial lake, and let ships sail across the mountains rather than through them. At the time, this was considered insane. Nobody had ever attempted hydraulic engineering on this scale, but the chief engineer, John Frank Stevens, convinced President Theodore Roosevelt that it could work, and he was right. Lake Gatun, when completed in 1913, was the largest man-made lake in the world, 425 square kilometers of water sitting high in the mountains. It serves three critical functions. First, it's the highway that ships travel across after being lifted by the locks. Second, it's the reservoir that supplies all the water for the lock system. And third, it generates hydroelectric power for the canal operations. The dam that creates Lake Gatun is itself an engineering marvel, over two kilometers long and holding back a volume of water that staggers the imagination. But here's where it gets even crazier. After crossing the lake, ships face the most dangerous part of the entire journey, the Culebra Cut, known in English as the Gailard Cut. This is a 13-kilometer channel carved directly through the Continental Divide. We're talking about cutting through solid rock and unstable clay to create a navigable waterway. During construction, this section consumed more explosives than were used in the entire First World War. Workers blasted away millions of tons of rock. Landslides were constant. The clay would soak up water during the rainy season and come sliding down without warning, burying equipment and sometimes people. Even today, over a century later, the Culebra Cut requires constant maintenance. The walls are still unstable. Landslides still happen. The Panama Canal Authority has teams monitoring the slopes 24-7 using laser scanners and geotechnical sensors. When a slide occurs, dredging crews have to remove the debris quickly before it blocks the channel. It's a never-ending battle against geology. After navigating the Culebra Cut, ships reach the final lock system. Pedro Miguel and Miraflores. These locks work in reverse, lowering ships back down to sea level on the Pacific side. The process is identical to Gatun, but inverted. Water drains from the chambers through those same culverts, and gravity pulls the ship down in three stages, 26 meters total. By the time a vessel exits Miraflores locks, it has completed one of the most complex navigational journeys on the planet. 
The entire crossing takes 8 to 10 hours. Compare that to the 15-day voyage around South America, and you start to understand why the Panama Canal changed everything. But here's something most people don't realize. The canal's capacity isn't limited by the locks or the lake. It's limited by water. Remember those 200 million liters that vanish with every ship? That water comes from Lake Gatun, and it flows irreversibly into the ocean. The lake is fed by rainfall in the surrounding watershed. Panama's tropical climate usually provides more than enough rain to keep the system running, usually. In 2023 and 2024, something unprecedented happened. A severe El Nino drought hit Central America. Lake Gatun's water level dropped to critical lows. The Panama Canal Authority had to make a devastating decision, restrict traffic. Instead of the usual 40 transits per day, they cut it to 24, then later increased it slightly to 32. Ships that had booked slots months in advance were turned away or forced to wait. The economic impact was massive. Some companies paid millions in premiums to secure priority passage. Others rerouted around South America, accepting the extra time and fuel costs. This revealed something crucial about the canal. Despite all its engineering brilliance, it's vulnerable to climate. As global weather patterns become more unpredictable, the canal's future reliability is genuinely uncertain. The Panama Canal Authority is already building a new reservoir system to capture more rainfall, but that's a multi-billion dollar project that won't be completed until the 2030s. Here's the twist. While Panama struggles with water, China has been watching very carefully. They've been studying the canal's weaknesses for decades. And now, they're making their move. China has invested billions in port infrastructure on both sides of the canal. They control ports in Colón on the Atlantic side and Balboa on the Pacific side. This gives them enormous influence over global shipping routes. But that's not all. China has been financing feasibility studies for alternative canal routes. Nicaragua, Colombia, even a land bridge system using automated rail. Look, the geopolitical implications here are staggering. The Panama Canal handles about 5% of global maritime trade and 15% of all US trade. Container ships carrying goods from Asian factories to American consumers, oil tankers moving crude from Gulf Coast refineries, grain shipments feeding the world. If China develops a competing route, or if they gain too much control over Panama's infrastructure, the United States loses a strategic advantage it's held for over a century. The US military depends on the canal too. Being able to move naval vessels quickly between the Atlantic and Pacific has been a cornerstone of American military strategy since World War II. Without the canal, the US would need to maintain much larger naval forces on each coast. The cost would be astronomical. The strategic flexibility would vanish. But here's something that will give you goosebumps. In 2016, Panama completed a massive expansion project. The new locks can handle ships that are 50% longer and twice as wide as the old Panamax vessels. These Neo-Panamax ships can carry up to 15,000 containers compared to 5,000 on older vessels. The expansion cost $5 billion and took nine years to build. It was supposed to cement Panama's dominance in global shipping. Instead, it revealed another problem. Many of the world's busiest ports can't handle Neo-Panamax ships. The ships are too big, the harbors too shallow, the cranes too small. So shipping companies are stuck in a weird middle ground. They have access to these enormous efficient vessels, but they can only use them on certain routes. This has created a new arms race. Ports around the world are now dredging deeper, building bigger cranes, expanding terminals, all to accommodate these super ships. The economic pressure is intense. Ports that don't upgrade risk becoming obsolete, but the upgrades cost billions. The crazy part is how quickly this has all happened. The original Panama Canal operated essentially unchanged for almost a century. 
Then, in just 10 years, from the expansion announcement in 2006 to completion in 2016, the entire global shipping industry transformed. Ship sizes doubled, port infrastructure scrambled to keep up, trade routes shifted. And now we're watching it all transform again as climate change, geopolitical tensions, and technological innovations create new pressures. Autonomous ships are coming. Within a decade, we'll likely see fully automated vessels transiting the canal without any human crew on board. That raises wild questions about liability, security, and the role of those highly trained canal pilots. Do you still need a pilot on an autonomous ship? Can an AI system navigate the locks as precisely as a human with decades of experience? These aren't theoretical questions anymore. They're being answered right now in planning rooms and legal departments. The Panama Canal Authority is already experimenting with advanced sensors, AI-assisted traffic management, and predictive maintenance systems. They're turning a century-old piece of infrastructure into a smart, connected system. But this creates new vulnerabilities, cyber attacks, system failures. The more digital the canal becomes, the more attractive it is as a target for hostile actors. Think about what could happen if someone managed to hack into the canal's control systems. They could open gates at the wrong time, flooding chambers with ships still inside. They could crash the mules, sending ships careening into lock walls. A single, successful cyber attack could close the canal for weeks or even months, while damage is repaired and systems are secured. The global economic impact would be measured in hundreds of billions of dollars. Here's what keeps canal administrators awake at night. The system is old. Components are failing. Some of the original 1914 machinery is still in use, repaired and maintained like vintage aircraft. The gates have been replaced several times, but the basic hydraulic system, the culverts, the lock chambers themselves, they're over a hundred years old. At some point, the entire system will need to be rebuilt, not expanded, rebuilt from scratch. And nobody knows how to do that without closing the canal for years. Can you imagine the logistics of shutting down the Panama Canal for major reconstruction? Every supply chain that depends on it would have to reroute. Every shipping schedule would need to be rewritten. The cost to global commerce would be absolutely staggering. Yet it's inevitable. The infrastructure won't last forever. The question isn't if it needs to be rebuilt, but when and how to minimize the catastrophic disruption. Meanwhile, the canal continues to operate. 14,000 ships per year, 40 per day during normal operations, each one a testament to human ingenuity and a reminder of how fragile our global systems really are. The Panama Canal isn't just a shipping route, it's a choke point, a vulnerability, a strategic asset worth fighting over. Are you ready for a world where the Panama Canal might not be the primary route between oceans? Where China controls alternative passages? Where climate change makes the current system unreliable? Where autonomous ships navigate without human oversight? That world is closer than you think. The changes are happening now, whether we're ready or not. This isn't the end. This is just the beginning. If you were impressed by the secrets behind this world-changing engineering feat, leave a like now. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next videos. See you in the next video.